Welcome to episode 125. I'm your host, Gustavo Dantas, and today I have my buddy, Greg McClarty. Greg is a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. He's the owner of Control Physical Therapy in Scottsdale, Arizona. He earned his doctorate degree in physical therapy in 2016. In 2019, he opened his business with a goal to help active adults maintain their ability to participate in sports. Although he helps people maintain all activities, he has a large client base of jujitsu athletes. Greg, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I'm excited to do this and I appreciate you uh, inviting me to do it. Who knew I would be interviewing you and that a trip? Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's like a full circle. Yeah, we're going to talk about this. This journey. I like to say that you were you're were one of my success study cases. Yeah. You know I, mean? I, I so thought I was BJJ mental coach before there was a BJJ mental coach. So. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So uh let's do this, man. Let's talk, let's start with jujitsu. When jujitsu show up in your life and what is the motivation to you to get into training? So let's go. Yeah, so um, I first heard about jujitsu in 2001, actually. Um, I was talking, to, I worked with this guy named Shandy O'Dell, and he, uh, he was a blue belt under Chris Lopez. Um, and he kept trying to get me to go, and I was like, eh, I'm not into that martial arts stuff, bowing to people. And <laughs> so uh, he was like, no, 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 it's not, it's not really like that. And uh, invited me to watch a UFC with them, probably the same story that everybody has, but uh, just kind of pointed out all the stuff that was jujitsu and just kind of kind of started uh, planting a seed in my brain, but I didn't actually really start contemplating it until about 2004, so three, three years later, um, and started looking for places. Um, the only place that I knew of was, uh, uh, place called Brausa. <laughs> so um, that's where I thought I was calling when I first called the place. And I'm pretty sure you answered the phone actually. So um, ended up going out, trying it. I uh, was really lazy about it at first and uh, ended up scorekeeping at one of your tournaments. I think it was the last one that you did uh, in house and uh, just kind of saw the art of it at that point. So just, just kind of figured out that that's what I wanted to be able to do was all that flowing jujitsu that I saw people doing at this competition. Um, so just kind of ramped it up and, and uh, just that's, what, that's how I got into it. Yeah, and, and share too about, because back, back then you are involved with the music too. So that's something that of course the listeners don't know, maybe people, that know you are listening so and then we get back to jujitsu but like so how was at first because you're performing doing gigs and stuff and training jujitsu so how was the dynamic of doing both um it was around the same time or yeah, you it, so, so i was i've always played music when i first started jujitsu i wasn't doing a lot of the music stuff um when i really got into the band that I was last in, um, I, I wasn't, I, I had a knee surgery. So I was, I was actually already a blue belt by the time I was really playing in that band. Um, so, but I, I wasn't training a lot cause I remember being on, at my first show on crutches. So, so I definitely was not, not training a whole lot at that point. Um, I, th I think at that point I actually even, um, it, it kind of was the point where I was back in school and I couldn't really, couldn't really train a whole lot just because of school anyways. So the, I didn't ever really get to juggle those things, but, but I think it would have been a, a disaster if I had <laughs> so yeah. just with everything going on. But, but yeah, I kind of, uh, I, um, with the music, it, it it definitely would have gotten in the way a little bit, but. So what are some of the, the main, let's say, I don't know, maybe improvements would be the word or like 
the difference of adding jujitsu in your life since it was the first time and uh, the first time as soon as you started. So what are some of the, um, the benefits that you notice right away? Oh, uh, just direction with my life in, in general. Um, even back when kind of that period where I was, I was not training a lot and in the very beginning, um, I was going to bars every night and just being a, not, not, not really focused on anything. And once I, once I focused on jujitsu, um, my life just kind of actually start falling together. So I, um, I ended up, you know, just, just finding a group of people that, that helped me focus on something. And, uh, I, I had never really had that before. I was just always scatterbrained and uh, wanted to do a thousand different things. But but um, with jujitsu, you just kind of found that guidance towards something that I love to do. So, man, I um, I feel that you have a, a cool story because remember uh, talking with you and a lot of the listeners right now. Maybe either they've been in a situation like this before. They know someone that you're in a situation that you were not happy with your work, all right? So this is something that a lot of people who are listening again, either live or living now or, and know that you're, you're kind of like, you, it was a stable job, it was steady, but I remember like asking you like, what do you want to do? And, and then you're like, man, and I thought about going to school, but you know, so all that stuff, that you're not sure if you let go of this like job that is stable for me to actually go back to school and then be broke, you know, student and stuff like that. So just let us know how was emotionally dealing with that transition with, with making that decision of I'm going to quit this job so I can pursue a career that I that I want to. So how what year was that first? Uh, that was 2008, actually. Okay. So, I remember that conversation pretty well, by the way. I, I do too. It was a pivotal point in my life, actually. I didn't. I hadn't even been thinking about the fact that I didn't like my job. You actually came up to me and said, "Hey, I don't think you like your job." <laughs> I was like, "Huh?" <laughs> and uh, you know, I just kind of, kind of, it stuck in my head. I was like, "Wow, I really don't like my job." So because no, I asked you, I said, "Like, do you like?" And you're like, "Actually, I hate it." You know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I don't, I don't know. It just something, something happened with that conversation, and it just like I couldn't stop thinking about it. And around that time, you had given me some tapes too to listen to, and there was a, uh, I, I, can't, I wouldn't even be able to tell you who it was, but there was another thing that stuck in my head, and the guy had said every successful person, uh, what they did differently is they just they committed one hundred percent towards what they want to do, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I think a month later, I, I had quit my job and was, was enrolled in school and, and ready to go. But uh, I, don't, I don't really remember being that scared of it. Mm -hmm. I, I think that I had just, uh, I had committed so fully to it after, after that stuff that it just, it, you know, I just had pulled the trigger and I was like, all right, I'm gonna do this. Um, the hardest thing was figuring out what I wanted to do. So I, the, I think from the period that we had that conversation to, um, to actually just quitting my job, I, it was just kind of figuring out what could I do that um, embodies what I enjoy. And um, I kind of started looking at physical therapy because it was you know, human movement. And I, I kind of look at the jujitsu black belt as like an expert in human movement and on the other side of that coin physical therapist is an expert of human movement too so i just kind of thought it was hand in hand so i think i'm not sure that i'm thinking about the book or the book or the the cds or whatever i gave it. i think it might have been success as a choice by rick patino i'm not 100 percent sure but i remember that a. uh, uh that I gave some to a, to a few people, so it might be success a choice. Let me see what. No, it, it had M M I B that one. But I remember the uh, talking with you, and another thing that happened so much that one, 
I always mention about the negative voice that lives in our head, right? Or the, the roommate that lives in our head that they give all their opinions or whatever and, and give us a lot of uh, BS messages. You know, we create the story and we try to believe it. And I remember that one of the stories that you were telling yourself and that happens with everyone at some point in, in different ways. Because how old are you back then? 27, 28, how old are you? 28 when I first went back. So. Yeah, so one of the things that, uh, that caught my attention right at, be, uh, at the beginning and you think like, man, you know, about going to college, you're like 28, I'm, man, when I get out, I'm gonna be 32, I'm still gonna have to look for, for a job, you know, and kind of being broke the whole time. And I remember uh, mentioning to you like, well, if everything goes well, and this goes for everyone that is listening right now, and you have maybe a goal that it might be in four or five years or whatever. I remember saying like, well, if, if everything goes well, and you're alive in, in four years, we will be 32. The only difference will be 32 with a degree or without a degree, you know, and, and sometimes we, we think so much like, man, the, just the pain of like, oh, in four years, so long, you know, the delay gratification. But the reality is, we don't even know if you're going to make the four years, you know, like, likely, you know, like we made it, but uh, that's the crazy thing of, of life, you know, so we can't just like, oh, it's in four years or in five years or six or whatever, you know, and I think that maybe helped you to, to reflect and to like, well, it, it does have a point, you know, like if, if everything goes well, be, be alive and then you finish and then what was next? Did you go to grad school or something? Which, yeah, I went to grad school. I mean, so I probably had about a year off between my undergrad and then uh, went to NAU for for grad school. So I had to get a doc that doctorate in physical therapy. So um, it's funny because when I first decided physical therapy, I didn't really realize that it was going to be an eight, nine year commitment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so at first I was like, I don't know if I can do four years of school. Yeah eight or nine but but uh yeah that was that was kind of wild it took took me away from jujitsu a little bit which was which was crazy but um that that's another another one of those negative things is you know i i tell myself oh i should have stayed training jujitsu but i run into to friends that are black belts now that were white belts then and they're like mm -hmm. yeah but we don't have a doctorate so <laughs> kinda, it's kind of it's one of those funny things that you you get the different perspective and it kind of helps you helps you realize that you, you yeah it's just moments of just different priorities you know what i mean and that's what i need to do and right now we've been been training again and um so that's what it really matters now how was the decision to open up your own spot and again uh the main topic here that we talk a lot in a podcast, maybe there's some people who might be listening for the first time, but the podcast is at first, um, and still a key main topic, I try to bring entrepreneurs, high performance, or maybe professional athletes or, uh, that have jujitsu in their lives. And everyone goes through their, you know, their own struggles to start the business and everything so how was for you the decision to you know what this is the time i need to start doing my own thing so what was the motivation for it tell me more so i kind of always knew that i wanted to uh do my own thing um i think that's the whole reason that i even went back to school is because i i've always known that i wanted to to kind of be my own boss um there's always, again, your, um, the, the dark passenger, I think, is, uh, um, he, uh, just kind of always in the back of my mind, this is not the right time. This is not the right time. Um, there was a point where I was sitting there, um, just thinking about buying something from my business and, um, I'm, I'm sitting there and actually verbally saying, should I buy it? No, I shouldn't buy it. Yes, I should buy it. No, I shouldn't buy it. Yes, I should buy it. And my, my girlfriend looks at me and goes, just buy it. So I bought it and I, I don't know, she just kind of pushed me at that point. And um, 
it it really was that like that external advice so um that that kind of helped me um just realize that you know i i know it's like a short version of it but like she's con she was constantly just kind of like you know this is what you want to do you you should do it just just so so i think just having somebody to kind of help me realize that that's that's where my life should go um helped out a lot um so but yeah, I always knew that that's what I wanted to do. Even in grad school, um, all of my projects were based on business of physical therapy. So, um, but but it was just um, again having that that person to kind of help believe in me. I think, um, which again, that's, I guess that motivates me a lot since that's kind of what convinced me to go to school with somebody mm -hmm. coming. And say, you should do this, you know. So, I don't know. So, now, uh, so we've been, you started in 2019. I know there's not a, a long time, but what are some of the biggest challenges or struggles that you have faced so far running a business or running a clinic? Things that you'd be like, man, I had no idea that this or that happened. That's with every business, right? Uh, it could be marketing, it could be staff, it could be. Uh, whatever you know in in your field what did you say so i think the the biggest trouble for me is um a lot of the the office contracting mm. clerical stuff that i'm not used to so i have to you know treat patients and then i then i have to figure out how to how to bill an insurance company you know so um it's Luckily, I just hired a company to kind of help me out with that. Um, but um, sometimes, you know, stuff comes back and they're like, yeah, we're not paying for this, you know? So, yeah. so trying to figure out like the situations where, where, you know, why didn't they pay for this? But how do I go back and, and, and figure all this out? So um, one thing is that I, I kind of look at it as, if I don't get paid that it's a, uh, I got paid in an education, you know? So, um, it, it, even though, you know, there might not be a monetary gain, I, I learned something. So now let's talk more about jujitsu, jujitsu injuries. So since you work with a lot of athletes, I know it's kind of tough to say, but let's first talk about some of the, the most common injuries that you treat? So <laughs> this is, it's crazy because it's all over the place to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's wild. Right now I'm getting an influx of knees and I don't know why. I've seen a little bit with the lockdown position. So. Mm, so uh, that's a good, that's a good one. Um, can you, can you talk a little bit about that, about that, uh, that lockdown because I've yeah I've seen man I've seen people getting you know uh, really messed up with that yeah so um, along with a lot of other positions you know you think about like reaping and reaping the knee and everything like that um, you're gonna hit angles on the knee that that are, um, could possibly uh, tear ligaments um, in the knee and the ankle so you tend to see a lot of um, knee injuries with these things, but you can also get, get some ankle injuries as well. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's kind of interesting because the, the lockdown, I don't think people see it coming. So like even, even the person that who's about to get injured, they don't really see it coming. And also, and something just pops in their knee. Kind of feels so, okay. Right. feels like, yeah, I'm okay here. I'm okay here. And then suddenly just, just pops. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then there, at that point, you can't really do anything about it. You're kind of in this, in this gravitational pull that's gonna. <laughs> oh, usually, is it ACL? The the may usually when people get messed up with that, or unnecessarily. So I've seen I've seen a lot of different stuff. To be honest with you, I get, uh, uh, and actually, really recently, I've been getting, been getting LCL and uh, meniscus is the, the two things that I've been seeing a lot of. Um, 
there could be like some partial damage to the ACL, um, but nothing, I haven't really seen a complete ACL tear yet. Um, but yeah, they, they tend to do all right afterwards, but uh, it's, a, it's kind of psychologically damaging as well, you know? So we are recording this in June, 2021. We just had the UFC in Glendale in Arizona, here in Arizona, where we're from. Uh, did you have a chance to watch I the UFC? No. no. Okay. Man, there's one dude, I don't know. I think maybe it was the undercard, I can't remember. But one dude has his arm like dislocated. We Everyone thought that arm was broken. And when I see joints getting popped, I don't like to see it. You know, just give me flashbacks. I don't, I don't like to see it. But this dude is inside a triangle with his arm dangling. Like, and I'm like, I, people are like, oh my God. It was like disgusting. And he get all kinds of funky angles. And then uh, I, I was watching the, the post-fight interview with Dana White. And he's saying like, well, amazingly, it wasn't broke. It was dislocated. And I guess they pop it back or something like that. But dude, I can't imagine like, that dude like, how intense that was and it just kept going then eventually the the ref stopped i just felt like maybe they could have they could have stopped before but that's the thing with uh in mma too they say the guy needs to tap but like how do you feel about do you think the the ref should stop uh or he's a professional he's got to deal with it oh no i absolutely think that the ref should stop it i i think it's a weird I think it's a weird uh, mentality to have, especially like you see like uh, like white and blue belts at tournaments, like not tapping to something. That's mm -hmm. it's like, for me, if you look at like a lot of high level jujitsu guys, like I, I don't know how many of your white and blue belt tournaments you have listed on your website or in your bio, you know what I mean? But like, uh, I don't think it's worth, uh, worth being out of training for six months just because you don't want to tap to something you know what i mean sure. um, but but even at that professional level you know it's you know you, if you can't train for six months you're not you're not working right yeah so. and we just uh, a couple weeks ago to jacare ronaldo Sozin, I he got did you see that oh fuck, man and it was loud too and that was one that he didn't tap I think the ref just heard and he didn't complain or anything because it came so quick yeah, you know that's like the, the, i think that's the second time he's done that too right yeah the first one was uh with the gi and this one was just different it just probably just got in a different uh angle too but like oh my god it's wild man it, it was bad and that's and something that i need to consistently um in school especially white belts don't know you know, we do mainly, we do like specific training, situational training for the white belts. I don't do like full rounds for them. It's kind of preparing them to roll certain fundamentals. We do, okay, escape from the, start from side mount and then one person needs to get out, the other needs to progress position, stuff like that. But sometimes there will be situations that they can apply and every day say like, sorry guys, I got to sound like a, a broken record, but you know, be mindful that, you know, be mindful to tap, you know, and be mindful with, with your partner too, because people need to go back to work, man. You know, if you just, you train your white belt and then you get, you know, get your arm popped and then you out of commission for a little bit for, and not even saying training, I'm saying work. If you need to use your arm and now you're getting time off and you're not getting paid because sometimes could be because you refuse to tap or Another person just went like, and just kind of yank it, you know, didn't take consideration of that. I would say, give him enough time to tap. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to be that guy that uh, that takes somebody out too. That doesn't, that doesn't feel too good when you're, you know, your buddy comes up to you and says, yeah, I can't train anymore because of your wild guard pass. <laughs> it's like, was it worth it to like, uh, <laughs> not not do a skilled guard pass over a over a spazzy one you know yeah most most of the time most of my injuries were and i think most of them in jiu-jitsu are accidents just freak oh, accidents yeah. Yeah. I, I don't remember times that i got like really really injured for something i, I mean i 
I had my arm popped in, in tournaments before, and then one of those like pop, 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 and then it kind of stopped like, well, already damaged anyway, so now it keeps going, you know? So <laughs> there are levels, right? There's times and since you're pulling it popped and I kind of turn a little bit. And when I turn a little bit, it's out. Now I'm like, okay, now I got, might as well just keep going. Yeah. But I think probably now being older, it'd be like, yeah, now I don't think I want to, I don't think I want to be that brave anymore. You know right. what I mean? Like recognize it, you know, make sure that uh, that tap so I can, so I can teach, I can do whatever. You know, so uh, changing gears here a little bit. So, what are some of currently as uh, as an entrepreneur, as a practitioner, what are one of the let's say habits that you have that you practice daily that helps you for business, for your everyday life? What's something that you like to do? And it could be something super simple. Sometimes people say, "My habit is to read." Your day my habit is to see whatever but what's something that comes to your mind uh so i think like and i actually i take physical therapy students and i i try and i try and make this the one thing that i teach them while they're with me is um learning from every situation or taking every opportunity to learn something and not not shutting it down just because of maybe uh, it's it's not the person that you should be technically learning from. But um, so like I've learned stuff from all of my students. I've learned stuff from my patients. I've learned so I always try and keep an open mind to a learning opportunity. You know, so you know, you, people come in and say I googled this, and uh, a lot of medical practitioners will shut that type of thing down to be like oh google doesn't know anything you you just you know i'm the doctor here type of thing and uh i try and listen to it so that i can i can learn from it for one um uh, but yeah just just trying to learn something out of each opportunity because it's you know you can you can better yourself just at, at any unexpected moment you know so that's, I, I just try and I try and keep an open mind towards, towards those opportunities. And with that, like, it means that I'm trying to better myself every day. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then on those, on those days where I do something that maybe I don't feel better about myself, I try and accept it and, and learn from that as well. Yeah. So, cause you know, we all make mistakes. I just, I just try and use that as a learning opportunity. So. Sure. And so what did you say it's one of the best piece of advice that you have ever received in your life? That could be from your parents, that could be from a friend, that could be that you learn in college, anything that pops to your mind. Uh, to be honest, we kind of talked about it already, but like uh, to, the advice you gave me to find what, what makes me happy, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't think I... Uh, it's, it's weird because you go back to that story about I called the school that I wasn't trying to call. Uh -huh. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't be a physical therapist at this point if I hadn't made that mis mistake. Yeah. It's not definitely not a mistake, but like it was not my intention at the time. Um, so, so yeah, definitely that, uh, that piece of advice that you gave me, to be honest. So. Yeah, and I feel that more and more I don't know, people have been reflecting more on that, you know, of like, man, do I really want to do something that, you know, I know that there's times that there's no other way around, you know, like you're, or you, or you starting your, your life, you, you know, you left your, your, your parents home and then you're starting your life. And of course, there's always the struggles and, and stuff like that. But it's hard when you start kind of going deep in a career and the next thing you're doing well and like, cool, you know, things are going going well financially and as labeled successful for for a lot of people. But at the end, you're like financially successful. But and then you're like, man, you're like, how long can you be doing that? Am I going to wait until like I retire, you know, and do it? So that's. That's definitely um, a tough one, but man, I think it all comes down to taking risks. You have to take your risk, 
You know what I mean? You had to go like, uh, okay, I guess I'm gonna have to let this here that is a stable and, and pursue. When I look back, um, I think basically every courageous, let's say, act that everyone does, it's gonna have that risk involved, it's gonna have the butterflies that are like, oh, I'm actually doing this. And it's funny that I remember to this day, I've been here in the United States now for 22 years. And every time, because when I landed in the United States, I landed in Las Vegas. And I remember getting the little tram now after I got out of the plane and then I'm there and I'm like massive anxiety just hit me. I was like, holy shit, I'm here. You know, like, I mean, you know, like I have to make this happen. You know, like the only thing I had there was my car and I sold my car. So like, I'm, I'm going to have to make and that, um, that kind of situation, just that kind of struggle, just, I mean, just give you a lot of strength, you know? So there's a lot, I was listening to Joe Rogan, um, talking about maybe like, how you think yesterday how important it is to go through struggles, you know, this, and especially now, like I'm doing better and then I can provide a better life to, to my son. And then people want to provide a better life to kids, but, and sometimes that can kind of like backfire in a way we try to do our best, you know, to, to support and sometimes can backfire because now uh, they're not too familiar with the struggle. So I think that's when sports come in and like jujitsu, it's a great one for like, man, learn to, to struggle. You can learn and struggle through sports. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And figure out that things don't always go the way you want. And that's one of the things that jujitsu taught me the most, especially competitions is that, yeah, you can have the plans, can do whatever, but you not always get the outcome that you want the way you want, you know, other people want to, you know, and I don't even know what I'll do. Like if I feel that I didn't have, not just jujitsu in my life, but the experience that I got in competing and dealing with failure and, and keep going. And they got to a point that it just doesn't bother me, the, the failure. You know what I mean? It's going to happen in many different ways, you know, and it's one of those like, move on. I'll try something new. It didn't work. And I thought it was going to work. Like, dude, I just don't have time to be dwelling on this. It happens. It happens. And, and you got to move on. Uh, one of the books, actually, I have the for people watching on YouTube, I have this book here, The Power of Now. This is the Portuguese version. Poder do Agora. Uh, I'm listening again uh, to this audiobook, and it's just good to always like just bring us back. So this is a good, uh, good suggestion for for you listening right now. Uh, the power of now, like really focusing on what is happening because I, my whole life I struggle with anxiety and have my issues with my social anxieties and everything. And a lot is just you project in the future what's going to happen in this and that. And then he talks about this, how, or you're depressed because you're thinking about, you're dwelling on what happened in the past and like, oh my God. And we'll forget about now, knowing we're not going to be here in this world for too long. And um, I think about this often, man, that we don't know when it's gonna get our time and anytime now I try to practice this. Like when I catch myself, like just kind of lost in anxiety or thinking of the future or whatever, you know, I just need to right away it helps me to just come back center. And I have like a little kind of motto, you know, that it kind of like I tell to myself that helps me to, uh, uh, to kind of be more present. There's a book, I'm not gonna remember the name right now, that I read the the, Sur uh, the surrender experiment, and there's a phrase that really stuck with me that is surrender to the flow of life. Sometimes you want to resist so much whatever is happening, and then surrender to the flow. Accept that, it, man. Man, everything's gonna fall into place the way it is. Maybe it's not the outcome that you want, but in the future you're gonna look back and say like, well, there was a there was a blessing that happened. You know, so more and more just kind of try to meditate. That's something that I 
suggest to people is be as present as possible. You know, I know it's not easy. We got so much stuff going on and having business and stuff. And so I need, so uh, I, I got a lot better in the past couple of years of catching myself and, and my like own little world and just for hours, just tripping on something and like, wait, you know, so now uh, I feel that I catch myself faster. You know what I mean? Uh, getting back to it. So let me ask you this. If you have to give an, an advice to the younger Greg, let's say when you're, uh, when you're starting, well, when you graduate college, let's say, as soon as you graduated, if you could go back and give him a piece of advice, not that you want anything different because you're where you're at right now, you know, everything in the journey that he went through, but uh, what would you tell him? And if, you, if there's a different moment that you want to say, I said in after college, but could be any other moment uh, that you want. What did you say? Uh, I just, I would just make sure to, to take it all in, take it all in and learn from it. Cause it's, you know, every, every moment that you have leads you to where you're at. Right. So, um, so I don't know. I kind of appreciate every moment that I've been through. So mm -hmm. uh, just, just, I would just kind of let, let myself know that it would be okay, mm -hmm. no matter what, no matter what you go through. And if, uh, as long as you, you find the positives in it and, and try and learn from it. So. And do you consume any type of content besides like technical work, you know, from, you know, physical therapy and stuff, but do you listen to podcasts or audio books or book anything, uh, you like to read books or listen? Um, what do you do? Yeah, I do. I I pretty much take moments to do all of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, um, I I don't really have like a I don't have anything specific. You know what I mean? Like I try and take nuggets from everything. It's kind of yeah. goes along the lines of learning from everything. You know, uh, I don't have anything that like like anything that I was like, oh, I read this whole book and everything from yeah, it yeah, yeah. awesome i just like there's just those pieces yeah yeah oh that, for sure i mean if you can yeah. get a book that you can have one page that gave you a great takeaway i mean the investment it's ready yeah it's ready made it's like going to a jiu-jitsu seminar and you learn one move that made a difference in your game man the the seminar is really worth it a time yeah you know? what what is a book that has made an impact on you that you remember is there anything that comes to your mind that a book that's oh man that was a good book man i there's been there's been a lot that i've read i just i can't like i don't know i i have a hard time like even so i i had to write down the uh the name of that that tape that you gave me because like i just i don't know i just i i kind of remember the content and not the, mm -hmm. not the name of things so i i can't even i can't even really give you a specific book um but i can tell you the podcasts that i listen to i listen to this one i like the bjj uh, mental models. Mm. I don't listen to that one at all. Cool. Uh, I've been listening to the Road to Black. Yeah. Podcast. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, I have. I haven't listened to them yet. Yeah, I just like there's a physical therapy aspect to it. Well. Yes, with Wes. Yes, yes. So, cool. Yeah. So we're getting close to the end of the interview. So what is exciting going on, man? What are the plans for control physical therapy? Uh, what you got um so i'm actually kind of scaling back a little bit right now with control physical therapy i'm not i'm not i just grew so fast that i had to like kind of cut back my i'm cutting back my hours a little bit trying to focus on life a little bit more so Good for you focus on jujitsu a little bit um uh, I, I spent the past two years working seven days a week so now i'm down to some day, some weeks I'm getting three days off just to just to you know, focus on me a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. um, I'm I've been working with a guy. Um, he's from a, another physical therapy place called Streamline Physical Therapy, but he uh, trains over at Gracie Baja, and uh, we're kind of we're kind of trying to put together some uh, seminars for local schools. Just uh, more. Uh, more like mobility uh, based stuff just that we're gonna 
kind of offer as a as a give back to the community, you know, now. Uh-huh. So just to just to kind of try and keep people from getting injured, you know. Our businesses are based on people getting injured, but like, yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. want people to get injured. You know, it's gonna happen, so so we might as well try and uh, try and minimize it as much as possible. You know, so yes, sir, man. Um, it was awesome to have you here. Uh, we need to catch up anyway. You know, hopefully uh, soon I have lunch or something. But it's uh, awesome to see the the change in your you know your path. You know, and uh, to see you like. You know, when you're in a point that are like, I'm not that happy, you know what I mean? To be able to find something. And this is like, I mean, if anyone that is listening right now and have like maybe a, a similar situation, and if you run out that maybe you want to go to school, maybe it is open a business or whatever to reflect on this and remember that, man, we just don't have a lot of time here. You know what I mean? Like I think about it, I'm, I'll be 47 this year. That's crazy. You know, and we're like, okay, how many years do I actually have left? Where do I want to spend my time? What I do? And so more and more, I think, what do I want to do? What do I don't want to do? What I don't want to waste uh, my time? So it's important to take all those things in consideration. So it, uh, whether you realize or you don't, you are an inspiration for a lot of people of like making a life change you know, and something and making it happen. And so I'm so glad to see your, your business doing well, man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Man. I, I appreciate you. Like, I, uh, I hope you, uh, you understand how much you've like impacted my life and helped me out, man. It's, 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 it's crazy, crazy where I'm at now compared to where I was when I first met you, you know, and it's, uh, you, you were, uh, giant part of that so awesome all right everyone um for all the listeners if you have any questions suggestions you can always find me on instagram at gustavo dantas bjj and greg what's the name of the website uh control control physical therapy.com um most of my jujitsu content is actually on instagram though so it's uh control underscore physical underscore therapy Cool. So if you're in Arizona and Scottsdale want to check it out, get in contact with Greg. He will take care of you. And great, great to talk to you, Greg. And I see you all soon. Oos.